Hey guys, it's Quad Nation. So today we're going to be going over the assembly of an Apollo 125 Chinese dirt bike. And guys, let me go ahead and tell you, this thing is an absolute beast. It's fast, it's loud, and it looks cool. I already love it. My son's going to love it even more. This thing is great for less than $1,000. So during the assembly, I went ahead and went over a few things. There was a discrepancy in the instructions. But um, other than that, it was pretty basic. So I put this video together for you guys. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, smash that like button and share. Let's go ahead and put this baby together. There we go guys, that worked. Look at that, doesn't that blue just pop? Like my son's gonna be so excited when he comes home from school and I got this thing together. This is exciting guys. All right, so the first step into releasing this beast from the cage is you gotta take the screws off of the metal mounts, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is take it off from the top of the handlebar mount. That's stripping. Ah, bag mabbit. Oh, hell. That's screwy. There's nuts on the back of these. You know how much of a pain in the butt that's gonna be? What in the hell? Son of a butt! Son of a butt! Shop that'll fit that? Of course, the one I need, I don't have. I have every tool in my big tool toy box except the one I freaking need. Come on, you son of a buck. There's bolts on it. I mean, there's nuts on it. What in the hell? You want to keep playing? So it looks like, at this point, I can go ahead and lift it up. Please don't scratch the fairings. Ah! Oh, please don't scratch the fairings. Throw that freaking thing over there. Let's go ahead and rip the plastic off. Let's see what these say. Warning, recycle. Plastic film is suffocation hazard. Do not let children play with packaging. Great. The first thing I'm going to do is give this to the first two-year-old that I find. Alright, if you're wondering which fork goes on what side, this one has the brake line clip on it. So you know it's going to go on the left side of the bike if you're sitting on it, or the right side if you're looking at it. So I'm just going to slide it in uh, as it was shown on the diagram and again I'm just going to the very top of the brushed aluminum part of it I'm leaving the red cap above the treble clamp so what I was explaining to you is the aluminum part of the fork here. I brought right up to the top of the triple clamp, but I left this red cap exposed, if you can see that. So that is exposed. Some people say that needs to be flush. My diagram shows that that cap's supposed to be on top. So that's the way I'm gonna roll with it. So I'm a total ding dong. I'm looking for the bolts for the front fender and can't find them. And come to realize they're right here they're preset into the uh bottom of the triple clamp so i'm gonna pull those out slap the fender in there and be good to go so definitely look over your bike because you may have some hidden screws and bolts on it 
All right, so it's time to put the fender on. It's really simple. All right, I'm gonna use the one at the front center, exactly where you pulled the bolt out to begin with. And you're gonna put the other two at the back, screw them right back in the holes that you just pulled them out of. All right, so in order to install the number plate, you're gonna have to remove this bolt, which is an Allen style uh, wrench or socket. Go ahead and take that loose. You'll see there's two flanges here, all right, or two studs. You're gonna take your number plate, slide the number plate onto those studs, take this, go up against the triple clamp, and then take your bolt from the number plate and install it back through to the triple clamp and you'll be all set. Now it's just a matter of finagling it to the top. I'm going to flip them around this way. That's going to go over here so I can go ahead and wrap that around the front. Look at this manual. If you'll notice, it shows the top clamp here, okay, the bottom clamp here, and it shows four bolts with four nuts, which it would be these, okay. This is all I have left, guys, okay. So what, I've, what I was able to figure out was what's actually going to uh, happen here is this bolt, once I put these on top of the handlebars, this bolt is going to go and screw down into there. Okay, and when it does, I'm sorry, it's going to be these guys. Okay, those are going to drop in there, go into there. Okay, once that's together like that, these are going to come from the bottom of this and screw into here and hold it like that. So, again, look what it's pointing to number six, it's showing nuts. Number six, nut. So that is wrong. It's just, it's an, it's an error in the book, okay? Because I was able to realize that these were threaded all the way through. The only reason they would have threads in them is if there's no reason for, uh, if it's not calling for a nut. So let me go ahead and put this on the bike. I'll show you guys what I mean. Where the clamps go, you wanna line up these ridges, all right? These ridges are designed so that way when you tighten the clamp down, it provides extra grip on the handlebars for forward and backward movement. So make sure that you line up the uh, lines here on this clamp and on that clamp, all right? If you're off one, that's an indicator also that your handlebars are gonna be off center, but also it's to help make sure that it don't move forward and back on you. Bolts in the bottom, bolts in top, no nuts on the bottom as indicated in the book. So don't get confused there and think that you're missing parts. We are now going to be installing the front tire onto the front forks. There's two different size spacers. We're gonna keep the small one with the nut. Keep this one with that. Hopefully they don't have it backwards on here. We'll know because the tire will be off, but we're gonna install it that way. Also, don't forget to grease the axle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rub this multi-purpose grease all over the axle so that way when we do insert it into the rim it's got something nice it can roll on. All right let's go ahead and do this. Right once you slide the tire in there I'm going to put more grease, you'll see. I'm going to put more grease inside there. So it has no choice but to push it through. And we can always rinse that off later. All right, I'm going to push the axle through at this point. All right. All right, I can feel it coming out the other side. 
I'm gonna get the spacer. Okay, so that's just grease. So I gotta keep pushing it. All right, and there she finally comes out. I'll take that excess grease, put it back into my container. I'm gonna take this spacer, put it here. Now I'm gonna turn this fork, find the hole. You're gonna have to work it back and forth just to find that hole. There she goes. And now at this point, I'm gonna turn this on. That's it guys. That is all there is to putting that front wheel on. Once the axle has been greased and pushed all the way through and nut has been placed on the axle, go ahead and crank down on it. All right, and I went about half a turn after it got snug. You know, we don't wanna ruin the bearings and go too tight, but we also don't want this front axle coming off. I'm going to install the brake caliper onto the rotor now. So I'm gonna back these bolts out. Now, there is a plastic piece between the two brake pads keeping these separated right now. So what I'm gonna do, so that way the piston, if there's any pressure on the piston, if I remove the spacer, in theory the piston would close and I'm not gonna be able to fit the rotor between the two brake pads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slide it on halfway and then I'm gonna pull the spacer out. Okay. Now that I have that spacer out, I can continue to slide and press the caliper onto the rotor. Go ahead and line these up. Kind of move it around just a little bit to hit that hole just right. This one here too. All right, looks like I'm in the hole. Just get one of them snug. Don't tighten them all the way because it's still gonna need to move a little bit for the alignment of the second bolt. So the bottom one's snug. Then at this point, see, it just moved a little bit just then. So there's gonna be some movement. That's why you don't wanna tighten one or the other super tight. I'm gonna go about a quarter turn uh, or not even, about an eighth of a turn. Once it's snug, only go about an eighth of a turn because this is really soft aluminum and you don't you don't want to strip this stuff out, guys, because then you do, you have a whole nother issue on your hands. All right, brake calipers on, guys. All right, so what you have to do with the front brake line now to prevent it from flopping into the tire or just, I don't know, flapping on the front of the bike, you're gonna need to loosen this up here and slide that line, slide that brake line through this clip here. All right, open that up. You don't have to take those nuts all the way off. Just open it up, slide the brake line through, turn it to where it's not binding. Once you got it somewhat in place, go ahead and tighten up the screws. So this is the Kickstarter. Ah, I just scratched the frame. Be careful with that, guys. Don't scratch the frame if you can't. If you can help it, don't scratch the frame. Son of a buck. All right. I just won't tell my son, maybe he won't notice it. Oh crap. All right, so this is the Kickstarter. Pretty simple. So it looks like this is gonna also be a 10. Let's see. So go ahead and loosen the bolt on the Kickstarter. 
there's not going to be a nut up the uh, on the other end because it's just the style where as you tighten it down it crimps it uh, it crimps itself around the shaft so it's pretty simple so you got to pay attention how does this swivel well it swivels out that way so don't put it on this way because you're going to be screwed all right it swivels out this way then you'd go so make sure that when it's closed it's that way so it's going to go something like that all right guys so this is your gear shifter if you guys have been around dirt bikes and four wheelers you know what the gear shifter looks like you know which way it goes on of course this is going to be out this is going to be forward you're going to remove the bolt again this is a 10 millimeter you're going to remove it because even if this is loose it's not going to slide all the way on because the bolt is going to sit right between the inner spline and the outer spline so get it uh, set to where you really want it and in most cases they're either exactly horizontal to the frame of the bike or slightly raised up in the front so i'm gonna go even horizontally um, I'm going to place the bolt in here, and if I feel like it's either too far down or too far up when I start riding it, then at that point I'll just take it back off and readjust. Go ahead and tighten it up. You don't want to strip it out, but you don't want it loose by no means either. You don't want it, when, when you move this lever up and down, you don't want to see play in here, okay? So... I'm gonna go about right there. That feels nice and tight. Um, again, no play. Also, this is designed so if you lay the bike down or you hit something uh, coming on straight forward, it'll bend this versus bending the whole shaft and likely bending this shaft, which you'd have to open up the whole motor then. So that's a good design. I'm glad to see they put that on there. The last step on this bike, is going to be attaching the shock to the swing arm. Let's go over everything one last time. Again, we removed the Kraken from the cage, hooked up forks, handlebars. Remember, there are some instructions missed there. We did the plastics. We do have to put the gas cap on. I'm not sure why they have it here, though. I, I'd do that last. Or we didn't put fuel in it until um, here in just a minute, but front wheel's done. Brake is done as well. So that's something else too. If you don't know how to work the caliper or how to slide it on the disc, that's not in here. So make sure you pay attention in, uh, to this video and, and uh, hopefully it'll help you. Um, so let's go ahead and hook this up. Do that one plastic and we're done guys. We are done. So it says you're gonna take bolt and nut and attach it to here feels like there's a good bearing in that shock that's good good let's go ahead and hook up the swing arm it's going to be this last big bolt we have here there's no washers it's just bolt and nut i'm actually surprised that there's no washers but it is what it is um i'm gonna rub a little bit of grease on this one because um not sure if you can see but this bolt is going to go through here. It's also going through the bottom of the shock. Okay, It's going to go through the bottom of the shock here, and that bolt is going to roll around in there. Now this is a greased bearing, but the bolt itself in there is still going to roll around and everything, so we're going to grease it up. All right, it's been greased up. Oh God, I almost dropped that. Not sure if that was caught on film, but I almost dropped that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick this up along with the shock until it lines up. All right, so it's lining up about right there. I'm gonna put it through this hole. I'm gonna put it through the shock. All right, just like that. It's gone all the way through. You put this nut on there. Come on, baby. Don't play games with me. I'm ready to ride. I'm ready to ride, baby. 
All right, so I am gonna need a little bit bigger wrench on that. All right, so I'm gonna open up the gas cap. Now I'm not impressed with the gas cap. This is a big, ugly metal gas cap. I mean, I get it, the tank is metal, but that's it's kind of nasty. Just like that, the fuel is, the fuel cap is on. Oh guys, this is one of my favorite parts. This means you're getting close to the end. Also, who doesn't love dressing up their bike? And that is actually probably one of the nice handlebar pads that I've seen on some of these cheaper bikes. That's really cool. You split it open, you slide it over the top of that crossbar, center it, you'll take this. Obviously you want it to face forward. You don't want to put the Velcro at the same spot that the split is at. So kind of turn it around until it lines up. Just like that, guys. Awesome possum. Now, that looks wicked. For a Chinese dirt bike, you can't beat that. That is cool. All right, guys, so this does conclude our dirt bike assembly for tonight. Tomorrow is a new day. Hopefully it's sunny. All we have to really do is check the oil, put fuel in it, add tons of octane booster to squeeze every last bit of horsepower out of this engine, and tear up the dirt roads. Uh, this channel is progressing very quickly. I am thankful for all the subscribers that are continuing to come in, and uh, you know all those that are loyal to this channel. Thank you for motivating me. And for tonight, this is Quadnation 929. I'm out. Guys, one last thing. Stay tuned for the first impression ride, because you're going to love it. God, I haven't been on a dirt bike in so long. This is so much fun.